Here the LA Gladiators with their roster. Arns are starting today. Not the most common sighting on a control map, but I'm personally hoping that we're going to be seeing Arns leaning into the Sojourn at the moment because we know this guy's flicks are nasty. And Sojourn... And Gladiators have a number of control. They've gone from 0 to 99 to almost 100 as the bot from Arns is thrown on the point. Khan tested by Kevster at the moment, and Kevster's feeling pretty invincible at this moment. Overtime still continues to tick, as there is going to be Dove on the point, picking up a health fight to get a little bit more to try and work with here. But while Skewed is alive, everyone who streams in is going to be afflicted with a Discord Orb, and Dove slips on a banana peel lemon. No further contest here for Paris Eternal, despite an inspiring beginning to Oasis and to their mid-season madness run. And Skewed continues to be a menace on the, on the Zenyatta. <laughs> Skewed popping out the C9, a little bit of mental warfare, nothing wrong with that. Arns, of course, we haven't really talked too much about the Ash yet. I feel like it's uh, been a little bit outpaced by the Dios and Paris Eternal as Werp has now moved over onto the Sojourn. It can easily be one tapped and take more than 150 damage in a single tap. Dove discovered has that pulse bomb. The root of escape. Oh, they're going to recall back into the enemy team. Now it's do or die for Dove. Oh, Dove had barely any blinks there. He barely got out. And almost could have delivered that uh, pulse bomb to Skewed. And meanwhile, Shu has nano Reiner and has decided to peel for the supports. And Kevster flanks, gets the pulse on the Wub. There's no damage remaining for Paris Eternal. Dawn has been anteed. And Gladiators with uh, just sweep away that final fight without losing a single person. As Kevster stands tall in the Tracer duel, so will the Gladiators in map one. They win Oasis. Sigma, while it's Patapan for the Gladiators coming in for Alans. When it comes to Patapan, we've seen anything from Sojourn in a Doom Fist comp to Cassidy and May if Gladiators offer Rush. At least that's what we've seen so far uh, post patch. Against a Hanzo and Overwatch League Lemon, you're always on a timer. Every free angle for Wub is a risk, Patapan. Was that a 90 degree flick onto Wub to shut down the Hanzo? I believe it bloody was. Well, and Dub's report performance against uh, Kevster on the Tracer in map one wasn't too shabby either. Now Kevster's still uh, edging him out in that case. And for now, as soon as I talk about someone in a, in a good way, Wub gets sniped. So Gladiators, as soon as they have that pick, they just collapse onto the Eternal at the choke. It's exactly what the Gladiators want to do with Reiner kind of excelling in that close range combat. So Gladiators will be able to hold the choke. Yeah. This means that if Kevster can find a stick later on, things may change. Reiner, oh my goodness, Vestola maybe shouldn't have revealed himself in that area because he was heavily punished for doing so. And Reiner going to back off once again for a good amount of healing. Shu is dead, however. So this is still a risk. Yeah, this is really good pacing from Reiner too. 100 HP, drops off the high ground, trades it off with Kevster and Patapan to go take over. And Eternal, yeah, they just get pulverized. So Gladiators are back on the high ground. Members, the grab flips only finds Patapan, but it's really not enough to even kill him. Patapan gets charged up off the shield and starts sniping at the supports of Eternal, who have to depend on Cod's healing, who's only pocketing Whoop right now. Gladiators on the flank, hoping to deal with that Whoop situation. And as Eternal have their focus completely split from the flankers, from the tanks of Gladiators, Eternal don't actually coalesce any focus at all and have lost control of the objective, and the Gladiators will hold them at this point. Khan made the decision there with a transcendence to keep Wub alive and hoping that Wub would be able to clutch. It meant Vestola was left to the four winds, Lemon, and the four winds tore him asunder. Oh, Going to get an instant kill on Tracer as well. Oh, Wub shot in the face by Patapan. And that's just going to be rough for the defense. But they're just kind of sitting and waiting, and Wub gets recalls back, and Kevster's just finding more value immediately. Patapan is just jumping over the shields, and Paris Eternal dismantled in that first fight. So there's a grab flux from Festola as Gladiators approach with Skew's Transcendence. The Nano from Shu onto Reiner. Gladiators have forced Eternal into an uncomfortable position, and Kevster gets to convert with the kills. The heart, the fight in the room is so well managed with a Transcendence as well. Vestola still up top, but remember, while moving as Sigma, that's when you're at your worst. For Transcendence, it can't keep Dredro alive, as the anti has turned off the Zenyatta Feelies and the Healies too. Aw, oh, Kevster. He's just a god at the Tracer. He's just getting multi-kills every map, and the Gladiator sail to the box of victory, and will be going to series point. Gladiators performing so well here on Midtown. I think they did a really good job 
of not feeling the need to change their composition, but instead changing the approach that they made. Rhino was getting destroyed in that room on the engagements, despite being able to do a huge amount of damage during them. So the key there was to instead give the Nano over to Reiner and force the shield to go down from the Sigma with some displacement, having a weird change of the shield inside to try and block those Nano shots, and that opened up the path for Shu to deliver a Bartic grenade that spelled doom for so many members of the Paris Eternal, and Khan was unable to really get much value out of Transcendences in this particular game because Khan was often so far away from those who really needed healing or Shu was able to shut them down with the bios. Paris Eternal, they do need to try and tighten up some of these screws before we continue, and they're going to be able to do that during this break. You fill the glass lemon, and I'm going to drain it, because uh -oh. we're going to Circuit Royale, which is... Mm, kind of where gladiators are at their best. This is where Shu and Skewed can continue to play the double flex support at its best. This is where Arns comes in and plays the Widowmaker, and there are very few people in the world who can hold a candle to Arns in Widow versus Widow. Okay, clearly Kepster, if he's expecting a sniper, I mean, I don't know if they were expecting two, Kepster's gonna tr try and overwhelm them. And that's, when you bring a far out to this double hit scan, you're really testing the mechanics of the Paris Eternal. And if I had to have like one final note about the difference between these two teams in Midtown, I would say it's pure mechanics. Like from Skewed, I think being my player of the match, fragging out against Dove, but when Wub has those lineups, when he has Stormbow, it doesn't matter how good of a far out you are, but Gladius for now just want to maximize this push and now can no longer leave the cart as overtime starts. A ton of choices to make here. Do they try and play for the Transcendence and the Blade, or do they make an earlier engagement and stop this cart a little bit earlier than it previously was? Wub forced to disengage here as there's a wraparound to maybe try and isolate Skewed. However, the sightline is played, and Shu takes a risk here. At least he jumps up just to scout where Dove is, and at the very back, Transcendence from Khan just to help Vistola beat everyone down. And it's pretty successful at doing so. He's killed two, and Khan with the third and fourth. Paris Eternal will stop the Gladiators from fully capturing the map. Given away, who's going to come in and contest this? Because we're getting mighty close to that box of victory as Arns opens up this can of worms. Oh, and Kepster had to swoop in and almost sacrifice himself with immortality from Shu. Survives for a very long time, so Kepster lives. Can't say the same about Ons as he got a brawl on the card for the map win for the Paris Eternal. And several more fights to go for the Gladiators that they hope to hold and make this a clean sweep series. That's where Eternal, in that last fight, were trying to get creative with the positioning. They had already lost a Wob, I think, to Ons, so it was already a fight that favored the Gladiators. Now, though, a huge amount of space has been lost for the LA Gladiators. Playing from more defensive positions means that Paris Eternal can get more setup room for free Lemon. And that means Werb has a lot more freedom as to where this Dragon Strike goes. Yeah, Paris Eternal have a lot more options on the positioning for their snipers, while Gladiators only have to, to go towards the pool window, and Reiner has to drop. He can't really shield those snipers anymore. He has to contest the cart. As a Graflux or Vistola, he's aiming for those supports, and Shu is still safe. He it, it does force out the immortality, but Reiner gets pushed off the cart, so the Paris Eternal take him back. Paris Eternal taking a map against the reigning champions and on the one I least expected. An unbelievable performance from a newcomer. Dove straight out of NA contenders, baby, into the frying pan. And Arns, one of the most lauded snipers in Overwatch history, gets his metal tested by a young North American hopeful, Paris Eternal, starts it up on map number three. And I'm not gonna say the cursed words, but Los Angeles Gladiators, their two losses have come from the unspoken curse. Yeah, Reiner just was not able to hold any space. I mean, Paris had five minutes for point C. And at the end, guess what? Los Angeles Gladiators had, had to hold for four minutes and, Gla and Reiner just stepped off the cart. I'm not sure what forced him to be overwhelmed like that, but it was a flood from the Gladiators. We'll see if the Eternal can stretch maybe another map after this break. Gladiators have that top metro control, which is great. You see at 100 charge, Panapin hoping to connect onto something. 
and does get dangerously close to killing Wub as he's anti. Paris Eternal are hiding, and Vistola tries to fire back with the grab flux, but it's really not doing anything to the Gladiators, who are just continuously shoving Eternal into a locker. Patapan's got that magic evasive footwork. I don't know what it is. He's dodging the bullets like he's in the Matrix or something. Paris Eternal have been sent reeling here for now. And Los Angeles Gladiators, they're going to be in a great position here to try and grab this checkpoint and get the forward spawns as well, unless Dove wants to triple blink in, but I doubt that's going to be the case. And there it is. On the other side, Bob wants to retake with the overclock. Oh man, this is just getting worse and worse for the Eternal, and now you just, you lost one, you're forcing a transfer on five, you're hoping to get the pick, and you killed Shu, but Skew does Transcendence, so Gladiators won't be backing down, and they go after the support of Eternal, there's no resources remaining, and the Gladiators already have a pretty decent lead, and it's only gonna get worse from here. Now with Dove missing, Eternal are behind again for v 5 as Kevster hopes to extend and go after Dredro, who is now on the Mercy, hoping now with the new Guardian Angel jump that they could just stay in the air and out of sight and out of mind, but it's not really happening. The supports of Eternal just have no safe place. Round 47 seconds in which to try and be dominant to win every single fight. Dredro gets skeet shot. Yeah, the only thing about the Guardian Angel is you can... As the drop happens, you can kind of read this quite easily. And Patapan just does just that. So as you're dodging a tracer, now you have to worry about the ranged hit scan of Patapan, who just doesn't miss those. Gladiator's hoping to fully cap. And this is just an ego move. They, didn't even, they don't even have to push this far, but they're going to make sure that they that they get their revenge for missing out on Circuit Royale. Eternal having to use Transcendence and Spawn just to move Gladiators away. It's sort of successful at doing so. They've killed Patapan and Reiner. But 120 or 125 meter push to 46. The clock is winding down and so have the hopes of the Eternal. And there's just no chance you can make this zero to 100 comeback. And they barely have control of Timmy themselves, even with respawn advantage, Paris Eternal unable to touch. The Gladiators will be taking the final map in the series. Just in the end there, another cool play from Skew, dodging the point blank accretion, using the Transcendence to body block it for someone else. What a performance to finish off here from Gladiators after a somewhat shaky showing on Circuit Royale, the map that I believe they were most inclined to win, but Dove sure showed me and sure showed the fan base of Paris Eternal as well that no glister, no worries, we're fine. But we saw a lot of teams playing both the Ana and the Zen to take advantage of long sight lines. However, now it appears to be for standard fare for LA Gladiators, and it's for Zen that I want to zoom in on for our player of the match lemon, and that is going to be Skewed, who uh, may be one of the world's best brigaders, but is also a damn sight good on the Zen too. And especially in this meta with the buffs to Zen, we're so glad to see Skewed get so much more playtime. And especially mechanically, he's just not a he's not a vulnerable support player whatsoever. It he made Dove's made Dove's job so incredibly difficult as the tracer to get behind there, because Skewed is just a number one target. And I never really saw Skewed ever struggle. I think there was even a stat line in Midtown where he went four and zero. Oh. He never died. So that's just the power of just the accuracy that Skewed has on a hero like Zenyatta.